Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen and today I want to welcome you back to another edition of your Adrenal Fix. Today I want to talk to you about adrenal fatigue and leaky gut. Uh, leaky gut is a very common epidemic that you probably don't even realize you have and it's also called intestinal permeability and basically the analogy I use is imagine your gut when you break down food is kind of like a fine metal strainer and when you break down the food you should be straining the water and the, and the pasta should be sitting there waiting to be you know broken down um, but when it's when it's a leaky gut problem then what happens is not only is the water passing through but some of that pasta is passing through too. That's the analogy I use. That's what intestinal permeability is or leaky gut is and there's a lot of reasons as to why that develops whether it's um, high inflammation, it's a hypothyroid problem, an autoimmunity, uh, blood sugar imbalances, pesticide exposures, chemicals, toxins in the environment, viruses, pesticides, um, parasites, heavy metal toxicities, xenobiotics, all of the above will cause that breakdown of that gut lining and ultimately the common denominator is inflammation and that's where adrenal fatigue comes in because when we have uncontrolled inflammation your inflammatory stress hormones the adrenal glands have to settle down inflammation when it has to do that over and over and over again because we eat every day then what happens is ultimately that gut breaks down and causes leaky gut so I want to talk about five major things that you should realize that's associated with adrenal fatigue and leaky gut number one is traditional doctors tend to not believe in it it's not part of their algorithm they don't have a drug that they can patent to be able to fix a leaky gut. So potentially they may say you have um, acid reflux and they'll give you an antacid which is pretty much opposite to what is going on. You tend to not secrete enough stomach acid and when you don't secrete enough stomach acid because of inflammation that causes your inability to digest that food. It sits there, it rots, it ferments, it gets inflamed and causes intestinal permeability. Then what you're doing is you're giving more antacids to reduce even further your inability to secrete stomach acid. So typically traditional doctors don't believe in it. Number two, traditional tests are incomplete. So what, what happens potentially is doctors will do, if they do believe in it, they'll do one peptide or one structure of gluten that they'll measure to see if you're reacting against. However, there's 24 different peptide structures that you could possibly be reacting to. So the analogy I use is you do this, you're looking out into the ocean and someone is asking you, do you see any boats out there? And you say, no, I don't see any boats. But then you do this and you're like, oh my goodness, there's a boat over here or a boat over there. What that basically means is when you're only tested with one antibody and you come back negative to that antibody, then that doesn't necessarily mean you're not reacting to the 23 other antibodies. And I see that all the time where patients don't react to alpha gliadin, but then they react to gluteomorphins or glutenins or gamma gliadin or transglutaminases, all the other peptide structures that they were further told they were negative. Um, a very, very important one is negative for celiac disease. So I have a lot of patients that get tested for celiac disease and when they get tested and they find that they're negative, most doctors will tell them, guess what, you can have gluten. And what I tell patients is when you are gluten reactive, um, you don't necessarily have to be celiac. So all celiac patients are gluten reactive, meaning if you have celiac disease, then you're gluten reactive. But just because you're not celiac disease doesn't mean you're not gluten reactive. So what I tell patients is all celiacs are gluten reactive, but not all gluten reactives are celiacs. So gluten reactivity could cause thyroid problems, gluten reactivity could cause joint problems, brain problems, other gastrointestinal problems, not celiac. Um, and that creates a lot of inflammation, thereby draining the adrenal glands. Um, the other one is allergy testing versus intolerant testing. So um, I get a lot of patients that will tell me, yeah, I had a skin fold test. They tested me for allergies and I'm not reacting to gluten. I tell patients, great, you're not reacting in terms of an IgE te set, test, meaning you're not getting an immediate allergy. You're not getting um, vasodil vasodilation or constriction or any histamine responses or itchiness or con uh, anything where you're runny nose or tearing. That's an allergy. But you could still have a sensitivity, which is a completely different language, a completely different way of reacting. So it's kind of like saying to someone, just because you um, don't speak Cantonese doesn't necessarily mean you can't speak 
Mandarin. It's basically a different language. And then lastly, a lot of patients will tell me an ALCAT test. They did an ALCAT test, they got tested for all these different foods, and they found that they had reactions to this or they didn't have reactions to that. That is not a true antibody test. It's not testing your immune system. It's not testing an intolerance to it, a delayed reaction. A lot of patients will say, well, when I eat gluten or, or wheat or bread or pasta or crackers or anything that has flour that's wheat derived in it, they'll say, well, I don't feel bad. And, and I say, well, just because you don't feel bad doesn't necessarily mean you aren't reacting in terms of an intolerant to it. So you could have brain fog, energy issues, sleep issues, focus issues, gas and bloating and pain, and that would be a intolerant symptom. All the reasons why you're watching this video could be one of the reasons why you're reacting to the food, but you don't realize it and it's contributing to your adrenal fatigue. So anyways, I, I just wanted to put this together for you so that you understand that there is a connection between leaky gut, but most of the time between doctors doing bad tests, doctors not believing at it, doctors telling you false conclusions, and then getting an incomplete test through an ELISA test or a um, a, uh, another test that doesn't test your antibodies, you're walking away with false conclusions about your gut and you're going ahead and eating food every day and that's causing inflammation. So anyways, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal fatigue recovery ninja. I look forward to helping you recover with your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up, a share, a like if you like this video. Ask me any questions so I can answer them. Uh, go check me out on my Facebook page, Adrenal Fatigue Recovery, or go check me out on my blog, Adrenal Fatigue Society.com. Looking forward to helping you solve your adrenal fatigue nightmare.